giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Um, Todd, before we kind of start with the FRC Top 25 here, we're going to take a few minutes um, just to talk about the Houston Championship. So yeah. many of our hosts are still recovering. <laughs> um, and many of our hosts, you know, are still preparing for Detroit this week. So they're just, we're giving that up that there's just no way that we're going to be able to provide kind of a full comprehensive recap for Houston. Yeah. Um, and regrettably so, like we wish we could, we could do more in depth here, but Tyler and myself being both at Houston and going back to back to Detroit and having jobs and lives and wives, what? <laughs> it's like, it's been a, it's been a short couple of days here that we've had to kind of prepare for Detroit. So, um, so like I said, uh, Tyler and myself and our producer on, on um, tonight, Nick, we're all at Houston. So we're just do a brief chat kind of about each division one at a time and then show you an interview um, that we were able to grab with one of the winning teams from each division, which is uh, pretty exciting. So um, Tyler, with that being said, I think we'll start with Carver here. So um, take it away. Yeah. So uh, Mike, you and I were down on Carver for quite a bit, especially during the playoff rounds as we saw some uh, interesting dynamics happen. Uh, 364 uh, is a team uh, that we mentioned a few times. Team Fusion uh, ended up seeding first, uh, but we had a little bit of a scorch earth start to happen there. I actually thought it was going to go deeper uh, mm -hmm. just from yeah. some of the rumblings I heard uh, about what's going on, talking to some teams uh, we're going to accept their decline. And I think 364 is still a fantastic team, but a team that's not very well known. I know some teams uh, were talking to me about scouting data and how it didn't seem to be a good fit in Matt. So you saw, uh, I believe, two declines off the top of my head um, from 364. If I'm mistaken, I'm sorry about that. I think that. it was uh, one. I'm not was sure. Was it just 1678? I think so. Okay. I can't exactly yeah. remember. I was thinking. I was thinking maybe there's more, but uh, but with that said, uh, you saw. Uh, I think something that was really interesting, Mike, is you and I ended up going back down and seeing it at Carver longer because 1678 Alliance, who had crossfire with it, Thunder down under, uh, and then also 1939, almost went out in the quarterfinals. That's right. Well, do you remember that? Like, holy cow! Uh, so. The first match they won. The second match, their triple climb failed as they tried to do it for the first time. And, I, and right, rightfully so, if you're going to try it, I mean, if you're a strong alliance in the quarters, I think it was the right call to, to try it and try to get it yeah. down. Yeah. But they lost that match. And then <laughs> match three comes along, and they win by one yeah. point with no fouls. Right. Yeah, we one thought point. Yeah, because um, we'll probably get to it later, but no, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um Oh, yeah, like Upper Creek went out in the quarterfinals, two in a different division. We thought that this might happen at, again to one of our top 25 teams, our top 10, our top five team. Um, so it was just pretty crazy um, that that happened. Yeah, and it was um, – I had posted it in our Discord about um, just that call with their climb that it was Frank there. It was um, – Liz, who was the FTA in that field, and it was also um, Aiden Brown. Um, oh, that's right. Um, all discussing about this climb. And we kind of, like, we had left that field, I think, when that happened, and, like, we noticed that, that, that they were, like, still there talking about it. And it was, like, it was probably at least 15 minutes, at least, that this was going on. Uh, and then they, they decided that uh, it would just be... <clears throat> um, no, no. What was it? Just one foul awarded per well, row. I can't. Yeah. Okay, so the so here's how it worked: is that you had in uh, in the was it number three? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head for half for half clients. Somebody correct me, but um, we're what ended up happening is 1678 lifted up their two lines partners. And guys, I know my cam's freaking out, so we're just gonna have to deal with that. Uh, but <laughs> so 1678 uh, started to lift their other two alliance partners. And they end up, when they kind of do this extra little lift right here, end up actually lifting them above the Alliance Station wall. And that is supposed to be a yellow card. Now, here's where the decision came in. I think the refs made the right call, is that they determined that it was two Alliance partners, right? So the question is, is it based on the robot that is actually physically above, or is it based on the robot that was essentially the one that's supporting the other bot. And what was ruled for that is that 1678 got the yellow card because they were the ones actually physically lifting uh, the other two robots. So instead of doing a yellow, yellow, which would have resulted in a red, uh, instead you had 1678 get the yellow card, which 
personally, I think is the right call. I mean, I don't know what the exact ruling or how that should be interpreted, but to me, that seems like a unusual circumstance that I think was ruled correctly. And 1670 had to then uh, modify how they essentially lifted robots to prevent that from happening. Yeah. Yep. And then um, some later, just on a, still on a 1678 train, just uh, um, we might see it later in clips of the week, but then there was a, a missed triple climb um, that they had to that it resulted in maybe only one level one half climb because mm -hmm. everybody toppled over. But, um, but yeah, Carver, uh, yeah, it was interesting too. Um, we saw, yeah, that 364 ended up picking um, Beach Boss, which Tyler, you had told me, I didn't know this, that um, they're from the same area, Team Fusion and 330. And um, so that was kind of cool for them. And just no, no, no. I think you're, I think you're thinking of uh, oh, 294. Four right. Beat City Robotics. You're yeah. right, you're right, you're right. So, but yeah. What um, I think the surprise might have been for things was uh, uh, 118 uh, and 4911. Uh, you know, nobody quite knows who 4911 still is, but uh, they came in and in the first match uh, in the semis against the 1670 Lions, they just got manhandled, right? And it was a lot closer in semis too, but it was uh, not. It, it was something that it was, it was quite interesting for something like that to see, you know, 118, you know, I was surprised that they, and I know this is difficult, but I was surprised they kept the drivetrain that they did because uh, they have such a fantastic machine. Uh, so it's quite interesting to see. And then uh, rounding out the division, I think on the other side of the story is uh, you had uh, Otto, uh, who was uh, on the number five alliance, uh, along with uh, is it AEM bot, I think it's uh, 6443, take out the number one alliance, uh, in three matches, uh, and the matches weren't terribly close, but it, they definitely put up a good fight. And of course, you have 1678's alliance going on. I just want to give a sh big shout out to the Thunder Down here for honestly a, a team that is not as well known for really strong robots, uh, really contributing to the alliance. They had some issues lining up, uh, actually, both the third and fourth robot of that alliance had issues lining up with 1678's triple climb, but I was really impressed with 3132. Um, I, I thought their bot uh, was actually quite good, and I honestly kind of took me by surprise to see them uh, come out and just really contribute be well to that alliance mm -hmm, for sure so it's kind of all i had on carver um i don't know if we want to go to the interview yeah let's go ahead and take a look so remember yeah. once again for each one of these uh we uh caught up uh and just essentially just grabbed somebody right after they won by the way uh, side coincidence mike Every division ended at different times, which is fantastic yeah. for us. Well, we got our steps in for sure, uh, trying to traverse across the divisions. Uh, we did get a chance to meet at least one member of the winning line. So let's go ahead and take a look. Down here at Carver with now seven time Einstein appearances, seven time division winners, 1678 Citrus Circuits. I'm here with uh, Libby, and Libby, what a fantastic performance. Uh, talk to me about getting on the Einstein this year and, of course, for the seventh time in a row. Uh, it, it feels really good. We are so proud of how well we've done. I feel every time, I know there's a lot of luck involved, but our team has always risen to the challenge. This year, we had a lot of struggles in playoffs. I'm just really glad, glad we made it through. Like, we fought through our issues. Our alliance partners helped us out so much when we were unable to score as much as we should have been. And it's just been a, cra a crazy experience overall. I'm really proud of all of us. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned there, you, you had to go to a third quarter final match, and you just kind of yeah. just kept going, kept building. Oh but God. talk to me about your alliance partners. What do they bring to the table that really pushed it over the top for you? Yeah, our alliance partners, they've been so great at both defense and scoring. Um, they were, our alliance partners were our first and third choices for a second pick, so wow. we really lucked out with them. 31-32 has incredible defense capabilities and also amazing scoring. They can help us out. They can play defense, then go right back to scoring tons and tons of cargo. 1939 is just, they've been so great too. They're great at scoring, great at defense. They've really brought a lot to the table and it's definitely our alliance partners that have helped bring us through. Well, congratulations once again, seven in a row, absolutely fantastic. But more importantly, this year, you're going back to Einstein. Congratulations, we'll see you down in the field. Thank you, thank you. All right, so that was a, an interview Tyler did with Livy from 1678. That was literally probably what, Tyler? Within a minute of them, you know, winning. Um, well, we try to let them celebrate a little bit. but I know, but had, it was still pretty close. <laughs> and they like, were the she last... was still red-eyed because she was crying. Yeah. yeah. She was so um, excited. They were the last d division to end, too, by far, I think. 
yeah. so they need the haul ass to get ready to go uh, for Einstein. So we so we try to try to grab it and be respectful of that because we know the teams want to celebrate uh, as well too. But yeah, thanks again, uh, the 1678 for being such a yeah. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention about 1678 is they were having tons of like electrical issues. We were trying to get like yeah. the bumpers with them and um, just couldn't get in because they were just like trying to figure out all these things. So um, to see them um, fight through all of that, because that was on Friday night, um, I think it was like Friday. What was it, Tyler? It was like five o'clock, five thirty or something on Friday night. And they're like, yeah, we got like we have to redo half our electrical panel or something. Yeah, so. they had some major issues. So I'm yeah. glad they got I'm glad they got them uh, fixed. I know they had to make some. Uh, I talked to Mike Corsetto. Uh, after the fact, and he said that they had to make some compromises in auto uh, and some few other areas as well, too. So, but still turned out pretty well for them. Once again, back in Einstein seven times in a row. <sighs> Insane, crazy. Yeah. All right, so up next, we're going to talk about the Galileo division. Yeah. Um, you go ahead, Tyler. Well, we're going to go a little bit quicker, too, um, so we don't take yeah. uh, terribly long in each one. We just have a lot of just these side anecdotal stories and stuff. Yeah. Uh, as we got, to, I mean, Mike, I mean, how, how many people we talked to, of course, is hundreds, right? Yeah. And it was so cool to, to, to see that. And thank you to everybody who stopped by and talked to us. Uh, it's sincerely appreciated. We'd love to hear uh, that, that you're a fan of the show and really cool stuff. I mean, we ran out of those uh, uh, name take things, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh -huh. uh, so uh, you have uh, the Galileo division, uh, very interesting uh, layout uh, in regards to teams and who might take the number one seed. You know, people talking about uh, 199, of course, 971. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not going to announce every single team. You can go check out our preview show to see how uh, our host did in regards to uh, their predictions for things. 44-14 uh, in that division as well, too. Uh, so 971 ends up seeding first. Uh, they have a 2.9 uh, RS, uh, eight one and one, uh, with one more uh, point over uh, 45.87, who is uh, Jersey Voltage, which is a, a team I know definitely got some love in a recap. 1986 uh, seating uh, a little bit after them, after 179. Uh, so. Some interesting uh, layouts for that. Uh, 971 picking up 179. Uh, I think there was an interesting decision to be made is if they should go with them or if they should go with Appreciate, uh, 2468. Uh, and I thought that 179 actually looked a little rocky in the in the quarters. And at first, I have to admit, going into the semis, I thought that the number uh, two alliance had a really good shot uh, at beating them, especially when you looked at the scores in the semis. You had... Uh, the number two alliance winning 102 to 67 and then 105 to 90 uh, compared to 88 to 69 and 92 to 86 uh -huh. uh, for the number one alliance. So you, you just look at that and, and I know defense plays and, you know, strategy that way, but just looking at that, those spread differences, I'm like, oh man, yeah, I mean, I, I think number two can take this. I think there's a good potential, but then you got to the finals and. 971, I think, got really quick and consistent. They started to lose defense a bit better despite being heavily defended every single time. Uh, 179 got back in the gear, which was great as well, too. Uh, and they end up taking the division 125 to 82 and 112 to 85. Uh, pretty definitive to me uh, from them. And they looked, uh, of course, quite strong uh, going into Einstein as well, too, especially with 179, I think, really starting to hit their stride uh, that way well as well, too, Mike. Yeah, 179 um, uh, as a team... 15 minutes from me right here in Florida. And yeah. uh, we had talked about them at length and just how good they look. So uh, 971 Spartan, uh, they, as far as I can remember, they, they're the team that um, they completely drive 100% um, with their drivers in the sandstorm. And the drivers are like huddled around, you know, their screen in, in the drive station and uh, are still, I think, putting up two, two hatches in, in auto, which is just really, really impressive mm -hmm. um, with doing that. And um, so yeah, that that alliance looked really good um, to me um, in the in the playoffs, and uh, it's just another strong outing from from them. And I just wanted to um, peep my shirt from forty four fourteen. I donated money to their team to get this shirt. I didn't buy it. I donated money um, for a good a cause. Yeah, so they were one of the they were one of the teams who did it behind the bumper. So you can check them out on uh, on our YouTube on our YouTube page. Speaking of which, uh, we did upload. Uh, Yesterday or this morning, man. We've done so many. I literally oh forget gosh, when we do yeah. these. Uh, so because we did, with FTC and, and FRC, we did, we have like thirty of these out now. Uh, but we did a cool uh, behind the glass with uh, nine seventy one. So talking about uh, what they do for auto, we get a nice close up shot of how their uh, what their camera looks like on field. So make sure you go check that out. Uh, under our behind, we we still have it under behind the bumpers, but we call it behind the glass. It it, it was something where their mat started. I'm just like. 
hell, let's just film this because it looks yeah, cool. Yeah, because so we're right there. It's a little yeah. shaky, so bear with me on that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I try to be pretty steady for that, but it, it looks cool. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Uh, I mean, we have, just in this division, 179, we did one with 971, 4414. Uh, we did an interview with, uh, I'm trying to remember who else we might have gotten in this division, but uh, lots of good teams, uh, lots of good stuff uh, coming from Galileo. So yeah. uh, we have the interview uh, with the uh, winners uh, of the Galileo division, one of the teams. Let's take a look. We're here with the winners of the Galileo division and Alliance captains 971 with an absolutely phenomenal performance here. Tell me what's going through you right now. You're ready for Einstein and how are you going to prepare for that? Yeah, well, we're really excited to get to Einstein. We haven't done that in 10 years. 2009 was the last time we got to Einstein and we won it all that year. Looking to do a 10 year challenge and do it again today. Well, hopefully for you guys and tell me about some of your Alliance partners you got going on. Uh, just a lot of great strategy seen out of them. Talk, talk to me about them. Yeah, so our Alliance members, especially 179, they were able to score a lot of points. We almost maxed out Cargo in our second to last game there. And our other defense bots really helped us out. They prevented a lot of climbs in these playoffs and they just really did a solid job. 971, good luck to you. Can't wait to see your performance here on Einstein in Houston. Thank you. Congratulations. All right, so that was um, a member of 971's Alliance, and uh, thanks for that, Tyler. So moving on, we're going to head on over to the Hopper Division, where um, we saw two teams where we thought, you know, as it, as it played out, would pick each other, um, Team Taters and then 2046. Uh, 2046 obviously having the tremendous um, success in the Pacific Northwest this year. Um, two district wins and then the district championship win as well that they had there and just an amazing robot that they have. And then Tyler, you can go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of eyes were on Code Orange 3476, who had unfortunately a, a lot of issues going into qual or uh, quarterfinals there. Uh, if I remember correctly from what I was told, they had an arm breakdown. Uh, and so, and, and chat, please correct me if I'm wrong, but somebody followed up with me after this, if I remember correctly. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing to see. I was, I had a lot of hope for uh, Code Orange. I'm sure they did as well too, uh, pairing up with uh, Rohotics. Uh, so yeah, that, that was kind of interesting. 21-22, uh, man. Talk about a team that a redemption story this year, where they get knocked down the quarters of their first event, and just kind of kept getting better and better and better, and that was pretty sweet. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, you know, Bear, Bear Metal is a team that we've talked about quite a few times on FRC Top 25 and our other shows as well, too. Uh, there's been a lot of things, you know, hey, is it them or Jack and the Bot that are the better robot? And I think a lot of people looked at Jack and Bot, but Bear Metal uh, was just spot on, performing very well uh, throughout uh, the entire event uh, and well-deserved to be picked up as the first uh, pick on that. Uh, like I said, I, I think just most of the disappointment there was uh, 3476 getting knocked in quarters. I think that was uh, quite surprising, and, and not to discount the number seven alliance that uh, helped out with uh, knocking them out, but uh, that's something I always like to look at. If a robot breaks down, that's a disappointing way to ever look at it. You know, you always want to have all six robots functional and operational to their fullest, and then if you beat them, uh, to me, that's that's pretty cool. So, but uh, with that said, huge congrats. Uh, uh, not something to mention in finals. Uh, the Taters Lines did uh, lose uh, their first match uh, to the number six Alliance uh, it's in the finals. Uh, so to see them come back, uh, win by one point by the way in finals two, uh, which is pretty awesome. No fouls in that match either. So a lot of close ones here. In the final three, they took quite definitively. Uh, so great job to them. Uh, and then if I remember uh, correctly, Mike, let's see if anything else uh, we caught up yeah. with 21-22 uh, after. Yeah, just real quick before you head there, I just wanted to shout out to East Cobb Robotics 4910. We did oh, a yeah. bumpers with them as well. They ranked third. They were captain that alliance, and they uh, picked up Team B um, Barbecue 27-14. Um, so unfortunately, they were knocked out in the quarters by the number six seed. But who would eventually go on to make the finals? But um, I was hoping that that alliance would get a little further. But um, but yeah, I just wanted to say that. And then yeah, we can uh, we can roll to the interview. Down here on Hopper, we're checking in with now the winners of the Hopper Division 21 22, the Alliance Captains Team Tanners. You guys have had a heck of a run of a season. Starting out, as, it was pretty rough for you, and you kind of just kept growing and growing. Tell me about this improvement throughout the entire year. Yeah, well, we started the season ranked 24th in our first regional, the lowest ever in team history. And 
we've just taken it upwards. As a team, we just sat down and said, look, we need to do better. We need to focus on our bot and we need to improve. And so that's what we've done over our past couple regionals. And here we've really focused on improving not only reliability, we've trained our drivers up. We've just, everything is so much better now than it was at the beginning. And in Peru, you definitely did. Talk to me about a couple of your alliance partners here. What are they meant to your alliance? How do they help you succeed and get you to Einstein? Yeah, well, really, I think a lot of people knew that this year coming in, the third and fourth bots would really make your alliance. And so we feel really lucky picking up Matheson uh, and our other partner who have been absolutely phenomenal for defense as well as assisting on offense on the cargo ship. Well, 21, 22, you guys are going to Einstein. Good luck to you. Can't wait to see you down in the field. All right, so that finishes up um, the 21, 22 interview with Hopper, and we're going to move on to our Newton division. Um, Newton, for me, kind of had a you know a lot of eyes, a lot of eyes on it, um, specifically with 1323 Madtown Robotics. Um, and 2910, Jack and the Bot, um, both who we have behind the bumpers interviews with. So make sure you check those out if you haven't. Um, and then, you know, we all saw that practice match that they had on th on Wednesday or thir what? Thursday. It was on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, and just like how awesome that was. And just like we all were thinking of it and we were doing behind the bumpers. And I asked both teams, hey, you know, what do you think about that match? And, you know, just smiles all around. And um, but then just to kind of see um, 2910 take a couple losses and, uh, 1323 had some issues as well. I think they they took a loss or two, um, you know, just uh, two losses. Yeah. Two losses. Yep. Thank you. Just was pulling that up. So it wasn't looking like that that alliance was gonna was gonna was gonna happen. But then you know, with Graybots finishing up at the top, obviously you're gonna go with you know Mad Town with everything that they bring. Um, so and obviously you know we saw them um, on in, in Minute Maid Park. And it was just, it was really great watching that alliance, that alliance work and how they could double climb there. And um, some other teams of note, we had 180. It was the captain of the four alliance. Uh, they looked good all weekend as well and just really looked good at the South Florida regional heading into that. And um, Quicksilver was in there as well. And then Tyler, you can uh, add anything you want as well. Yeah, I mean, a, a couple of things to mention. Obviously, I think 2910 uh, falling the, the way they did was a huge disappointment to everybody around and a bit of surprise. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't expect them to seed well necessarily. They did go seven and three, and I think they were 15th off the top of my head. Uh, and it was pretty, as you mentioned, Mike, it was pretty obvious that uh, 973 would go with Mad Town. I mean, that that's a no brainer, right? Um, yeah. And it would, and it, let's say the teams were even equal. It makes sense to do that inner picking and leave uh, that robot to be down in the ranks as well, too. Uh, so they get picked up by 2471, knocked in the quarters, which I I think was probably one of the most surprising. Uh, I think that was the most surprising quarters out, I think, out of anything. Uh, 2471, uh, I don't think, was at the strength they were last year uh, by any means, but still a good team. Yeah, uh, so sure. uh, th that was a bit surprising for it. You know, I will tell you the one alliance uh, that, that I thought looked really good, too, and uh, kind of came out of nowhere, uh, was the 846, 842, uh, 2659, 1806 alliance. Uh, I, the number five alliance picking up a SWAT as their fourth robot, not a bad day on that side. Uh, 842 Falcon Robotics. Uh, I got to see them in Las Vegas. I thought they were a fantastic machine. They actually beat the number one alliance uh, in semis match two. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe 1323 was knocked out a decent part of that match. So that does help. Uh, but really, looking at the scores otherwise, like, holy crap. I mean, the number one alliance just absolutely dominating the rest of the competition, uh, winning the finals 105 to 74, 102 to 84. Uh, and pretty much every other match, they won by 20 points or more, with the exception of one that they lost. Uh, so, obviously, very definitive, uh, absolutely phenomenal. The 1323 robot, so cool. We got, as Mike mentioned, we have a behind the bumpers on it. Uh, some of the attributes of that it, it, are just absolutely incredible. So, really neat to see. Uh, some shout outs as well, too. Uh, 180 Spam, I got to see them play. A little bit of consistency issues on their end, but I thought they had a high potential. Uh, and then uh, one other team I want to mention, uh, Robochargers 3005 coming out uh, in the number uh, six alliance, I thought looked pretty good on that field uh, as well, too. So uh, yeah, lots of lots of interesting things on Noon. Uh, however, I don't think it was any surprise that once the alliance selection came through, uh, who was going to be taking that division, and definitely it, it didn't really change out anyway, unless a robot broke down for a match. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. I'm good there. If we want to uh, roll our interview. Yeah, let's take a look. Down here in the Noon subdivision with our champions here, 1323. I'm here with John. 
John, you guys had an absolutely phenomenal season so far. I know you come into the division as a favorites. You didn't see it first, but you got the pair up with an awesome robot 973. Uh, so talk to me first about your Alliance captain, and I want to hear a little bit about your strategy in the matches. Yeah, so we teamed up with 973, and the, the, really the strategy was to put up as many balls, objects as we could. Obviously, like we got some stuff we got to work on before we get to Einstein, but I think we, I think we have it. We're pretty good. So, so looking at going on to Einstein, what are some things that you do want to focus on? What do you want to kind of shore up to make sure you're in great competitive shape? Well, we definitely need, need to be able to get around defense because you know I feel like we're the, the they're gonna set a roll towards us. We kind of expect it, so we should be ready for it. I feel like once we get that unlocked, we should be ready for Einstein. We're looking forward to seeing you guys on there, John. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you. Can't wait to see you down on Einstein. All right, so thanks to 1323 there for their interview after um, their win. And then moving on, we're going we're gonna to head into Roebling. Um, I'm just going to start it off, and then Tyler can um, interject after that. But yeah. I just first wanted to say, uh, and we'll, I'll read off a few more names a little bit later, but I just wanted to say thank you to Allison and Ann um, from the Pit Pirates 2642. Um, they saw Tyler and I outside during the team party or the welcome party or the welcome whatever. Yep. Um, we were just we were just standing there, and um, these two women approached us and um, just you know asked us you know if we were you know the Mike and Tyler, and we talked to them. We took them a picture. I think they tagged us on Facebook, and I just wanted to give them a special shout out too. So I, I just want to mention, like I think Mike, the biggest surprise are. I mean, it, 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 I'm going to try to say it without, like you know gloating and sounding that way, but like. We do get a lot of people that come up to us. It's super cool. I mean, it, it's humbling, right? The, it, yeah. Because we love to talk to you as well, too. And it, it's always strange because, you know, we just go back and work our everyday jobs after this. But we're so excited to talk to you. But I will tell you, I have had more uh, people that are around parents' ages come up to us at Houston. Like, it was it was a crazy amount, actually. Uh, so Because usually we get a lot of students and, you know, people between typically like 16 to 24, uh, yeah. which is a, kind of our core demo, right? Uh, but we're starting to see a lot more parents and stuff. So it's cool that we're kind of getting uh, multiple different demographics uh, in it. And we, we, love the, we love to talk to people of all ages and, mm -hmm. and just talk about the show and, you know, what do you like? What don't you like? How can we improve? Thanks for watching, really, right? Yeah, uh, that's the cool part about it. So very neat. Mm -hmm. All right. So, yeah, go ahead. You can... Uh... You can talk about Robo. Yeah, well, and we're going to bring in uh, producer Nick in a little bit, too, because Nick is on 148, so we'd love to get a little bit of his insight uh, for it. But Roebling, uh, one of the other divisions, I think, the the really watch, uh, you know, to me, uh, a lot of eyes on 148. The interesting thing, uh, Roebling, obviously, uh, I'll, I'll speak for Nick a little bit about this. Decimated. Plague, absolutely <laughs> yeah. plagued and decimated with uh, uh Lag trip times issues, and lag yeah. and everything else going in in regards to how many matches they had to replay. Uh, I know there are a couple other divisions that had issues, but Roebling was just absolutely just shocked. And 148, unfortunately, getting some of the brunt of that. Uh, and they did get to replay a couple, which helped out uh, for that. But uh, seeding first, I think, uh, surprise to many. 294 beat City's Robotics, which is definitely a cool team, uh, but I did not expect them to seed first. Uh, really weren't even that much on my radar, to be honest with you, uh, for something like that. Uh, picking up 3647 Millennium Falcons. Uh, I'm going to guess, and Nick can confirm or deny if you like that, uh, uh, 294 probably talked to 148 and 148 said we're going to form our own alliance ahead of time uh, right. would be my best guess. Uh, so... Uh, looking at that, uh, I know uh, 148, interesting in regards to if 294 was going to pick Spectrum or 3647 or somebody else. Um, and once again, we'll let Nick talk to this, but I would guess that 140 is pretty happy to pair up with Spectrum, a fellow uh, Texas team uh, and friends uh, of, of each other. So that was pretty cool to see on there as well. Uh, Green Hope Falcons, by the way, taking the number three seed. With them. We have an interview with them, uh, a powerful team from North Carolina that I think is really starting to make some waves, which is really neat. Uh, and uh, 359 Hawaiian kids ending up as the number five alliance captain and getting uh, a questionable call, in my opinion, uh, with a red card uh, in the quarterfinals uh, in regards to uh, two robots contacting each other and then a robot tips over sort of thing. Uh, and they end up getting a red card for that. So that was disappointing to see. Uh, something like that happen. Uh, I will mention as well, too, in the semis, uh, you had. Uh, the number six alliance actually pushed it to three matches uh, against the number two alliance, uh, which was quite interesting as well, too. Uh, and then on the other side of the bracket, uh, you had uh, which alliance? Well, alliance four, right? Alliance four in, ends up going to the finals uh, against them and not even close. The first match, 107 to 49. Like, wow. Uh, so... <laughs> 
the 148 alliance looking really good. It was cool to see uh, 148, uh, I believe, swapped out uh, at least once. I, I think it was it, it was about half the time. And Nick can jump in a second. I think that they they might have swapped out their uh, other machines on there. So it's pretty cool to see them utilize multiple strategies for something like that. So let's yeah. bring on uh, producer Nick, just to get a few uh, comments and insights from him about uh, 140 in the Robling division. Yeah, Tyler, we uh, swap between both of our second partners um, quite often, just depending on our strategy and how each one was playing and how we were feeling about the robots at the time. So uh, both of them played extremely well. We're happy with both of those picks. They're both great teams. Super happy to work with, uh, I think it was 2907 and 6928. Both great great teams to work with there. Um, super happy to work with Spectrum. Um, we've played a lot with them and against them but never on the big stage. I think this mm -hmm. is also their first trip to Einstein and having Alan win WFA on his first trip to Einstein was, uh, yeah, was pretty, pretty cool. dope. He was like right there when he won that. Yeah. yeah he that wasn't was... even like paying attention to the award ceremony. <laughs> yeah. And then like John points at him and he's like, Hey, that's you. <laughs> and he was, they were like the next match. Yep. <laughs> they really were. Yeah, literally, they were. If if you watch, uh, go watch the script, and we'll have uh, some stuff more on this later. Uh, you can literally see <laughs> Lucy Hell in the background. Uh, you know, and I texted him right afterwards. So congrats, as I'm sure many did. Uh, cool to see. But now, now is he the youngest and the first first alumni? I think so. Right. That sounds right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, yeah. So that that sounds right to me. So. Uh, so, you know, we'll talk more about Alan later. I think, and, and as well with Raul Birch as a volunteer of the year. Uh, but really cool stuff, and and to see that alliance just kind of uh, keep pushing through. Uh, 140 obviously dealing with a lot of adversity in the uh, uh, qualification matches with some just some weird replays and stuff, uh, but very well earned by them. Uh, and uh, just big shout outs to the number two alliance uh, for taking it. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we do have an interview with a member of uh, Spectrum. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Down here on Roebling with the division winners, 38-47 Spectrum. I'm here with Jack. Jack, what an amazing performance uh, from you guys. Uh, talk to me about your feeling about getting on Einstein. Are you ready for it? And what's going to be happening on your end? We've been preparing for this for a while. Uh, we haven't ever made it to Einstein. This is our first year. We're ready to go. Absolutely amazing and exciting as well. How about some of your alliance partners going on uh, for this too? Talk to me about uh, what they brought to the table and how they're getting with you to Einstein. Uh, our alliance partner, 148, we have... We've seen them a lot. They're close to us, uh, but we've never really played with them. This is our, kind of our first time playing with them, and it's going great so far, and I look forward to the rest of it. Well, absolutely. Well, congratulations once again. Can't wait to see you guys on Einstein. Good luck to you there. All righty, so that was our Roebling division. Thank you, um, Nick, for hopping on and uh, giving us some a little more. And then last but not least, uh, we're going to talk about Turing. So for me, obviously, um, all eyes on 254 there. We did uh, behind the bumpers with 254 as well. They approached us about doing one. And uh, it was really great um, diving into that. And we yeah. um, talked about and got to see some of the changes that they've made. Um, two regional wins this year. Um, but obviously with 254, um, that doesn't, you know, uh, there's when there's been proven to be made, they make it. And they went um, from their, you know, normal climb that a lot of, you know, teams are doing. They went to a suction climb. Um, which we got to see. Um, and I don't know if they cheesecaked a, a suction climb on their partner. Um, but No, I don't think they did. I'm pretty sure they didn't. They had one. Because there, was, there yeah. was a match. Yeah, okay. So you're talking one. about the Chinese team, right? 6986? Maybe, yeah. Yeah. I just I know there was one a match or matches where they, they you know, both both teams went up with a suction climb. So Well, um, 3310 is a suction climb in 254. Oh, so maybe it was. Well. Okay, so maybe. Yeah, then it and was. then. And then 1696 uh, was went able... up, and then they went yep. side by side. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. So, um, yeah, so it was cool to see the the changes that they made, and um, 3310 Blackhawk Robotics looked um, awesome um, as well. So seeing them two together was uh, really, really cool and exciting. So go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, uh, I, I think the disappointment, the other disappointment in this one, closest to 2910, was probably 1619. Uh, Getting out in the quarters, man. Sixteen nineteen just had a tough go. I mean, that's there's no other way to put it uh, in regards to them. They're a fantastic machine, and just things just didn't come together for them. They went uh, six and four in falls, ranked twentieth. Uh, they get picked up by the number two seed, uh, fifty one ninety nine. Uh, the robot dolphins from outer space, uh, who uh, had two regional wins this year. I, I don't actually really know too much about this team otherwise, uh, and I don't I don't think they've had quite that success as they did before. So that's kind of their first 
shot at the big dance. And so I'm not quite sure if there was, uh, you know, some strategy concerns or what it was. But I, just quickly looking at TBA, uh, I don't think 5199 ever won an event prior to this year. Uh, so, uh, you know, that that I think was a disappointment. Uh, you know, we're good friends with 1619 and just kind of talking to them. You could you could just kind of hear a little disappointment in their voice on how their performance ended up because they had such a fantastic machine uh, and to see them – uh, go down that that obviously was a bit disappointing for that but uh with that said how about some good things right 254 and 3310 pairing up uh was pretty epic uh, a lot of naysayers for 254 and we'll talk about this in the interview in a minute but uh tell you what guys you should not have bet against 254 because <laughs> they came and absolutely dominated uh and i'll tell you the, the pickup of the day 948 energy as the fourth robot uh, i don't know what other people were sleeping on about them but holy cow uh that was a fantastic pickup by them uh, as well too. And they did get to play a couple uh, matches uh, as well, at least one, if I remember correctly. So, but 254, absolutely dominating, going six and zero, winning every single match by a pretty wide margin. The closest was 103 to 117, uh, but just looking, just absolutely lights out, both 254 and 3310. Uh, wow, great to see 3310 get on the big stage, especially after I think to them was a little bit disappointing knockout. They got knocked out uh, again, 1678, uh, and uh, 1619 last year in the division finals when they were paired up with 118. Uh, so great to see them uh, on the big stage as well too. Uh, just a couple other uh, shout outs and notables. Uh, on the team, uh, 2383 Ninjaneers is a team uh, that I don't think too many people uh, really got too much insight on ahead of time. I think a few people knew about them, but talking to a team that went to Ohio and Orlando for their couple of regionals. So uh, kind of came out of nowhere and ended up being number five Alliance captain. Uh, if I remember correctly, I actually got to meet some of them in the airport on the way home. Really cool people uh, and a great team uh, as well, too. Uh, so... Just so interesting I, things, yeah. Oh, go ahead. So thank you to our chat. That's why I love chat. Yeah. Um, the 254, 3310, um, 6986, and 948 was ranked 1st, 3rd, 11th, and 12th. Yeah. Like... <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Which is crazy. Which is crazy. Yeah. So cool. Um, I think that, that I'm good with Turing if we uh, – well, yeah, we can show. And by the way, we will be starting the top 25 few minutes. That's why we started a half hour early because we wanted to give a little bit of buffer uh, on things. So don't worry. We'll start the top 25 in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look uh, in our interview here with our Turing winners. Down here on the Turing field with now the division champions, 254. I'm here with Marcus. And Marcus, what a wild ride you guys had. You look at coming through this year so far. I think a lot of people have, were naysayers saying 254 yeah. couldn't make it. Now you're looking for a three-peat going on to Einstein. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. I mean, starting in SVR, SFR, we, were doing, we weren't doing as well as we thought we would, but with each regional, we just kept getting better and better. And I think with the, with the new intake and the new climb mechanism, we're doing better than ever. Talk to me about your alliance partners a little bit. 3310 uh, has, has been absolutely phenomenal and you had some other great contributors to your alliance tell me about them yeah so 3310 was doing fantastic we saw them under defense we saw them without defense they do great no matter what and we are and our partner 6986 we're surprised they weren't picked by the time i got back to the first alliance they're, just, they're ranked 11th or something like that and they just do amazing they do great cargo they have level three so we can get that triple climb and our other partners 948 great defenders great cargo bots you can also do level three it's just amazing alliance overall well good luck to you as you head on the einstein camera to see how 254 does thanks <laughs> Sorry, we were laughing about something off air, completely unrelated. <laughs> well, somewhat related. <laughs> oh yeah, so. Uh, but thanks to 254 for that interview there at the end. Like yeah. Tyler said, it was great. Kind of, we caught each. I don't know if this is gonna work out in Detroit. Probably not. But uh, Tyler and I were just running back and forth between divisions as they were ending uh, yeah. to to try and get them. So thanks. So uh, moving on to the Einstein um, round robin. Is that where we're going, Tyler? We're going to yep, round robin. So Ron Robin was exciting. Um, Tyler and I kind of got, I don't know, there was a lot of open, I was really surprised. I said it to Tyler probably two or three times, how shocked I was that um, seats were not filling up as quickly as they did for the Ron Robin. Yeah, um, there I know were there a lot was, of open seats, actually. I know but... there was like a, a you know an hour, hour and a half break. It depends yeah. on when your division ended. But still, I was shocked that teams weren't were in position earlier. Because uh, that being said, Tyler and I scored some great, <laughs> some great seats. Like, what second row? No, first row. Okay, like, so here's my theory though: <laughs> is that this game is better viewed from afar. So I didn't actually look back, but there might have been a lot more filling further back, so you can maybe. see both fields. I'm not sure. Yeah. So yeah, we scored seats right in the right in the first row with seat backs, which was always a plus. Okay, that was nice. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> yeah, we only 
So when we were only there for what a couple hours, we don't have to well, do this all weekend. And, but, and then uh, we sit down, and then we notice we're like, "Oh crap, they're going to be yeah. filming uh, uh, Blair and oh uh, man, I'm sorry, man, the dude from Holy Cows." Uh, uh, right there, and I'm like, maybe we'll scoot over just a little bit because I'm not sure we want to be in the background of that. Only <laughs> yeah. first wants us in the background of that the whole time. But there is a little photo bomb. Uh, uh, yeah, later on for we'll that. see that too. So it was good. We had great seats for um, the Newton Division. It was, uh, which was energy. I don't, I, think. I, don't I don't know. Whatever, whatever it was. But um, it was, it was exciting. I mean, it, it's cool. It, I was. You know, 15 matches always seems long, especially with all their fillers. Um, it didn't really seem that long, the five rounds no. of three matches. Um, I thought it went pretty pretty smoothly. Um, and it was it was exciting to watch. Um, you know, you had um, some surprises in there with um, some teams that would lose matches by some. And then uh, just kind of seeing how it all play out. And then we were talking maybe strategies about, um, you know, what teams may do depending on who, you know, they may want to play. They could, you know, do certain things maybe to kind of guarantee who they would play. Uh, so just kind of seeing how all that worked out, and then um, basically the the two uh, the two divisions we saw who would kind of take it. We knew what by the beginning of that last round, I think that kind of no matter what happened. Um, yeah, there was a very small case scenario that if Newton were to lose, I think then there was an opportunity for I think it was Galileo to jump up, uh, but it was a very like they would have had to score way more in cargo and stuff. It was pretty well locked in. Yeah, so that's those those are my thoughts on the round robin. I don't know if you have anything else. Yeah, I'll be I'll be just real quick. So I think it, an interesting thing it, it was a little disappointing to see uh, Crossfire and Citrus Circuits and uh, the rest of their alliance with yeah. Thunder to Honor and stuff uh, just kind of keep losing. But then the funny thing was is they end up winning. I think their last two matches and technically took third. Yeah. Uh, so so big shout outs uh, for that for coming. You know they could have just easily just gave up and just say you know what there's no way we're advancing anyways. And, and I'll tell you what. Uh, Carver definitely still played their heart out the rest of the time, so it was cool to see. I uh, saw uh, Turing defeat Newton, uh, which I think a lot of people thought was foreshadowing uh, for uh, the uh, finals Minute Maid Park, which we'll get to in just a second. Uh, but obviously that turned around another way. So just real quick, Mike, I just want to get, this was your first time at the uh, yeah. Houston Championship. What were your thoughts on uh, George R. Brown Convention Center? So George R. Brown was um, very similar to Detroit. Um, those are the only ones that Detroit was the only one I had been to. I had not been to Houston before. Mm -hmm. So it didn't seem too um, foreign. It was very, very similar to how um, Detroit is set up. So in that aspect, I think it's nice because you know you're getting um, the same experience, I guess, for teams, and in, in, at least in that aspect. Um, I am still just, you know, candidly just not a fan of, of how this is run. You know, like I, I just don't – It it feels like, you know, world championship – but it kind of doesn't at the same time. You're talking about the essentially the layout with the bleachers and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, like versus just, the epicness of a football stadium. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, there's just a lot of congestion where, you know, I think it kind of opens up with obviously the bigger spaces that you have, but, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's it. I mean, it, I think it went well. I mean, they do, a good, they do a good job and um, overall, my, you know, no complaints. Yeah, I mean, I get I George George R. Brown. I think is way better than uh, Kobo in regards to they have that extra seating uh, in the yeah. middle, which I think helps out a lot. Uh, I, I give it a B plus A minus. Uh, I don't really have any major complaints. I agree with you, Mike. It, it championships does have a great feel. It is cool to just look down and see six fields that is cool. uh, next to each other. And I will also give first some props for. Uh, uh, putting FTC up on the third floor. I thought it was much more accessible that way uh, and, and just kind of rearranging things the way that it was. Uh, the innovation fair was really cool. Uh, I got to stop. I got to see a, a friend of mine I haven't seen in a long time uh, who I used to be on a team with who is now a, uh, an Imagineer for Disney. Uh, yeah, so it was really pretty cool. cool. Shout out to you, uh, Martha, if you're watching. Um, or I'm sorry, Martha, that's your mom's name. <laughs> Katrina, <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I was going to uh, say, I don't think that was her name. Yeah, no, I... Long weekend. Uh, but, yeah, just uh, overall, I thought George R. Brown, I thought was pretty well ran. Uh, and the experience I thought was great for the team. So uh, Minute Maid Park, uh, lots to unpack here. Very short amount of time because we know we want to move on uh, to the top 25. Uh, so, uh, Mike, I, I got to ask you, your first experience in Minute Maid Park, what did you think, man? So it was just knowing what has happened in the past, like I kind of, you know, you go in ex expecting. Mm hmm certain things <laughs> you know just kind of seeing you know that first glimpse when we walked into um the area downstairs when we first got in there the first glimpse on the tv a tv screen of how you know the field is laid out i was like this is this is not good <laughs> you know like it's just it's it's a weird it's a weird spot like if you're on maybe the first baseline 
um, you, you can have maybe a good view or, or, you know, like we had talked about, you can have about a better even, view, even right? behind the field is, is okay. What's that? You can have a better view. I don't know if it's a good view, but it's yeah, a better yeah, view. Yeah. So, um, when we were watching, um, I don't, so here's kind of my other thing with what happens, right? So the reason why I think there's so many, um, media issues is because like when we get to Einstein, that's new, like that's a new production. Like that's, sure. they haven't done this at all during the weekend. And then when we get to Minute Maid Park, that's a new production. This is a one and done. You can only simulate like so many things. I know there's production run throughs and all that kind of stuff, but um, it, like this is it. You're they're going live. Like there's no there's no practice. There's no practice data. You know. So um, so sitting there, you know, seeing that they have the steady cam and some other cams around the camp, like we can't see as it is. And then to like have um, to have views uh, of only like one team or one alliance essentially, because they, I think they had both handout cameras on the, on the blue line or whatever alliance, yeah. um, you know, and then it, these are just, these are camera people doing their job. Like I don't, I don't fault the, the production companies for this. Like I think this falls into first to make sure that they know that we don't want to see like these artistic shots of the cargo going in, like through the hole of the cargo ship. Like that doesn't interest us. Like, you know, that's not what we want to see. So I flipped open my phone quick to see what was going on on <laughs> we, Twitch. We were actually watching it on Twitch as it was going live because we got a full field view that way. Yeah. So that, least, that's the truth. Yeah. So. At least on Twitch, they had the full field view. But uh, I was texting Justin, I'm telling, and I was I thinking we were talking about how they were still flipping through like, you know, handheld cameras. And he was saying, well, we have a full field view, but it's still like so far away, you know, but um but yeah, it was, it's cool. It's, it's, you know, they have to make it a big production because they're renting out all of Minute Maid Park. Like you can't, you know, you have to make it worth the money to be there. You know, like you can't just get in there and, and play three matches and be done. You know, you, you, you got to do all this other stuff. That being said, I, I still think it should be best of five. I think that would, that is a great idea. Now that does make it a lot later, which means they have to, you know, cut out a lot of the other uh, stuff in between. Uh, yeah. But that, you know, Mike, I will tell you though, uh, I, I was more impressed this year than previous years. I thought the stuff they did in between since they, ha we have to accept that they have to do it. Right. Like yeah. that's, they have a huge captive audience. They're going to cram as much sponsor stuff down your throat as possible because they have a huge captive audience. Right. That's just the way it's going to be. But with that said, I thought what they did, I thought broke up a lot more for the live crowd. I mean, the mascot race was, was neat. Bringing it down yeah. to R2D2 yeah. was neat. Uh, you know, the, honestly, the thing I laughed hardest about when the, uh, uh, the uh, kid introduced Dean and Dean didn't pay attention. I thought was quite interesting, but, yeah, uh, but, uh, you know, things like that, uh, the fireworks after I thought was a great touch yeah. the way they yeah. announce, uh, the, the new, the new game and stuff coming, I thought was pretty good. Uh, the minimum, honestly, if the views were good, I would give, I would give it an a plus. Uh, yeah. I thought it went really well. Otherwise, I think uh, it's got to fix think, the damn views. Yeah. I, and you can't because it's like, you know, it's, it's the same reason why, like, when the NHL plays outside on uh, the NFL stadiums, like, part of the contract is is that they re-turf the field, like, on NHL's dime. I'm pretty sure, like, that's how it works. Yeah. And um, But, like you said, like, production, like, as a program, I think it was fine. Like, I think, but just at that point in the day, starting at, like, 7 o'clock in the morning, um, and it's approaching, you know, 7, 8 o'clock at night, it's a long day. Like, we oh, just, like, we just want to, we want closure, you know, and then, having an hour in between two FRC matches and then like just another, and then it was all of a sudden just like 10 minutes between matches to play the third. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like that's kind of like where it's kind of like, it's a little weird, but um, so with that being said, with the, the matches on Einstein were great. Like, you know, you and I were right next to each other. Um, you were kind of preloading um, a post for for some days now. <laughs> yeah, I was you're like preloading on that. <laughs> no, <laughs> because I was doing it too on the on the FRC Top Twenty Five Twitter. Like yeah. I had it, you know, I had it saved as a draft, ready to go. And then um, the uh, thirteen twenty three alliance, um, uh, nine twenty three thirteen twenty three alliance um, wins that second match. We're like, oh, oh, here we go, you know. And so I think it was a really it was a really exciting three matches there. Um, and you went from where you thought 254 Alliance was just going to dominate um, to, wait a second, you know, 13, you know, 1933, 1323 Alliance, um, you know, is maybe, excuse me, 254, 3310, and the rest. I don't, I'm just doing it for shortcuts, but um, 
you know, and then like, oh, they might have it here. And then, you know, go to the third match. So it was, it was as a spectator, it was very exciting. And, um, as you know, being there, you hear the two different, you know, you hear the, you hear the cheers for both sides, you know, and I think there was a, there was a great number of people that wanted both teams, both alliances to win. But So, so um, we budget, we are way over our budget time uh, to talk about Houston, uh, but we definitely, we're glad we were able to kind of do that. Uh, big shout out. Um, and we'll have a little bit more during the clips of the week, uh, but big shout out to Terrell Birch, uh, for volunteer of the year, uh, who I've seen ref in multiple, multiple locations, uh, and deal with some, uh, crazy calls throughout the times that I've seen, especially in Australia. Uh, a year or two ago. Uh, and then, of course, Alan Gregory for the Woody Flowers Award. Uh, very cool to see uh, something like that. We already talked about it a little bit before, and then we'll have something in the clip of the week for him as well. So congratulations to both of those. Congratulations to the winning lines. And congratulations to Exploding Bacon, who we didn't mention, uh, yeah. taking the Chairman's Award uh, as well, too. What a, what a fantastic uh, team uh, taking that. Um, we, we don't have enough time to go into the depth of how well-deserved that is, but very cool to see their team that has been uh, around us for a long time uh, and definitely well-deserved uh, to see them win. We need your help to keep fun at Loud, Live, and Independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.